Yeah, so there's, there's a few, yeah, and then of course you got deaths at the end with uh, poor Fred and Dobby. Oh, <laughs> oh, I can't talk about Dobby's death, I can't. Um, someone, uh, Shane also asks, uh, could you tell us some other gothic novels or authors? Yes, yes, well of course, um, the very first gothic novel I just read, and I don't think I'd reread, but the really, I mean, if you're going to go back and actually read gothic stuff from start to finish, you to start with um, the Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. You know, it's it's all right. It's kind of weird. It's but that's where you should start. And then from there, there are a couple that are on my list to read. So I, you know, we can all read these together because I, I kind of skipped a couple of decades and then one went ahead to the popular stuff. Um, so there's the Castle of Vathic. Uh, there's uh, Anne Radcliffe stuff like the Mysteries of Adolfo. Uh, yeah. Those are next on my list. I actually haven't read those yet. And then you get to the stuff like uh, Dracula and Frankenstein. Of course, are two big works of gothic lit. Um, more modern stuff, pick up some Neil Gaiman um, graveyard book, which is the next one on my list. Coraline is a great one. Um, any others? Anyone want to throw? Read Edgar Allan Poe, of course, and read H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraft yes. Read H.P. Lovecraft. All of it. You have to read Lovecraft. Wonderful stuff. Um, you want another yeah. one? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, how do you feel when people call Potter a children's book? <laughs> I feel, you know what, buy this book, because Amy Sturgis, Amy H. Sturgis is a uh, fantasy fiction and uh, science fiction scholar and gothic lit scholar. She's writing a book on the gothic imaginations of J.R.R. Tolkien, Madeline Lundell, and J.K. Rowling, which will be out next year. But she's got an essay in this called When Harry Met Fairy, F-A-E-R-I-E, -E, um, which is the parallels from the realm, fantasy world, um, that kind of thing. And it's all about breaking down that ridiculous barrier between uh, children's lit and fantasy lit. Um, Tolkien and Lewis came along, and they're the best people to read on this, because they came along and they said, we still love those stories, those fantasy stories, those kids' stories, and nobody our age is taking them seriously or reading them or writing them anymore, so we're just going to start writing them. We're going to start writing the stories that we want to read. And so I would read Tolkien on that, and I would read Amy Sturgis. Um, I, I think that, you know, Oh, I can go on for a long time on this. Yeah. Um, because there's obviously stuff that parents are right to say, well, I'm going to wait for my kids to read that. I'm not going to go there. But we're, we're talking about Harry Potter books being children's literature. Um, how many adults are in this room? How many adults go to these conferences? How many adults who have been teaching literature for decades are teaching Harry Potter in their classrooms as serious literature? Um, yeah, it's, it's not just kids' lit. Others? I just watched the last uh, latest Harry Potter movie, and I feel like we're getting darker and mm -hmm. not they're losing some of the magic, and I'd kind of like mm -hmm. to see what you mean. Getting darker and losing some of the magic. Wow. Um, I need to think about that for a minute. They're definitely getting darker, and they need to because the series gets darker. Um, are they losing some of the magic? I liked Half Blood Prince, but I've only seen it once. So I don't know if I can comment as well on that as you might like, and I loved Order of the Phoenix. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting funny looks. So we may just have different um, opinions on that when it comes to how a film should be made and how it should relate to the books and all that. Um, I, the difference between Columbus's movies and the later ones are that Columbus definitely created a very deliberate Wizard of Oz-like magical sort of atmosphere that it, when you take away the brightness of everything, those first two movies, it, you can't get the feeling like some of the, you know, if you're, if you're used to something that is more bright and magical and that kind of thing, you can get that feeling. I think I, I know at least the feel of it, what you're talking about. Because there's, there's a more kind of overall magical sort of feel to the Columbus movies, the first two, than, than later. Um, but I tend to prefer the later ones, so. Any others? Time for one more? I have time for one more. Let's do one more. Okay. Um, Ryan wants to know, where do you see Harry Potter in the future as in like the, the I guess you could say, in the tomes of great literature, like where do you see it standing? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be talked about for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades. Um, I, this question came up to an extent at Portis on a panel I was at, and I said the place, you know, there's going to be the great stalwarts, like the people who are here, who are going to keep talking about Harry Potter until we die, and we're never going to let it go. Um, once, once the second movie, the second Deadly Hallows movie is done, the kind of pop culture hype will start to fizzle a little bit. 
will all keep going, but some of that will fizzle. But an academia is going to keep growing. Because the only thing that is, that is holding this series back right now is what James Thomas calls the three deathly hallows. It's too new, it's too popular, and it's too juvenile. And every, every work is going to have to deal with those criticisms from the Harold Blooms and the Ass Byatts of the world. So that's another great one. You should read uh, James Thomas's essay in here where he addresses those, and Amy Sturgis addresses those issues. Uh, the first, really, the first half of this book at least is all about Harry Potter ending up as great literature. So here's a great defense of the series. I think it's going to be uh, considered, and it's always going to be mocked because so is the Lord of the Rings, right? It's still mocked and treated badly by, by academia. There isn't a better book in the last hundred years than the Lord of the Rings, in my opinion. But it's not going to get treated like that because it's fantasy fiction. And we've grown past all that silly superstition, and we need realism now. So, yeah, I think it's going to do just fine. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. And I'm going to be sitting over there if you want to buy books, and I'll talk to you.